Good morning, folks. Happy birthday to my wife, Kat, who is also our CEO here at Space Weather News. New viewers, that makes her my boss twice. Let's see what sort of show the world put on yesterday, starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star with a whole lot of coronal features, not much to show for it. Bright sunspots are decaying. Coronal holes have become dominant, but their solar wind intensifications are not too strong at the moment. But while all was calm from a geomagnetic perspective, down here on the ground things were a bit of a different story. Tornadoes, high winds, taking on the southern states, they came in the night. From satellite, we can see the tops of the clouds and the lightning return. Folks, this lightning satellite feature is only a couple of years old, but if it had existed for longer, this would still go down as one of the most incredible January nights of lightning ever recorded. Almost insane how powerful the line was last night, and it's marching on this morning. What causes such tremendous energy would be the wind convergence, air masses crashing together that have different temperature, moisture, pressure, and electric potential having to equalize it all in a very narrow range. In fact, the electric potential seen here in the Cape demonstrates that a huge energy flow met a wall, had to go somewhere. Indeed, it transformed a lightning, and the somewhere the system is going is eastward today. Eyes open. Up next, we're going to the wildfire smoke from Australia. NASA and the ESA have been tracking the different aerosols and the overall cloud enhancement from the blaze. It's really their first chance to get to use their new high-sensitivity instruments for detecting all those particles since the full suite of detectors and tracking technology went up there. A couple of folks at MIT are discussing how to improve climate modeling, and following in Princeton's footsteps, they identify the clouds as the major source of uncertainty. Here they're trying to go a step further and reduce parameterization effects in the model by using machine learning. Not sure how well that's going to work in the end, but the important part here, they point the finger at the same place Princeton did. Up next, we're going to the NOVA events. Turns out they may have misjudged the stellar collapse potential, now saying that many of the stars they thought would undergo collapse will indeed actually explode. This is not only in line with the plasma cosmology version of astrophysics, but it satisfies robotized no compression of the condensed matter allowed paradigm. It's a nice one there, actually. And speaking of plasma, Oh, the ESA does not want to wait for the low surface brightness machines. They want XMM Newton to start cutting down the brush right away. Succeeding here in showing the plasma slosh in a galactic cluster, the sparse, diffuse plasma actually has as much mass as the tiny interior galactic dots, and it's co-rotating with them. Here we're getting an excellent hint of what's to come visually from these observations, but we do still see some aspects stuck in the past. Despite the perfect split on proper motion and literally everything else that screams electromagnetically controlled system, heck, they even know it's plasma, they still can't escape the gravity of their own histories and they blame collisions, mergers, and gravity for the patterns you see. Don't laugh, they're being serious. Last but not least, folks, as we get yet the latest look in the magnetism of the galaxy and how it interacts with our star, we are going to break from the climate series just this weekend to deliver tomorrow a special on the galactic magnetism. So more is coming on this. In two weeks, Kat will be doing her first Barnes & Noble signing for the children's books. I'll be there as well, running after the children, so if you're in the area, we'd love to see you. Link is found below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. Once again, we're going to come back to the climate series next week, but tomorrow, we're compiling 26 months of research, morning news shares, and national lab discoveries on galactic magnetism. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. Of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.